Okay, so we're at the Celebration uh, Golf Academy today. I'm with Ian Meller here. We are doing a 3D analysis. Is that the best way to put it? Yes, we're going to be using the uh, Bowl 3D software. Bowl 3D software. We've done this two years ago together. We did a little bit because I had never been on a real 3D system before. We kind of did it just briefly, so I know it was a really cool experience. The amount of metrics you get from it are, are crazy, and we'll see that from the screen capture later. Um, but we're going to use it today. You're going to help me out with a couple things that I've been working on in my swing. Um, you guys will have seen that in the last two lessons that I did with Tyler. And then we chatted last night kind of about what we were working on, but it'll be cool to really get like crazy scientific with it today with this system, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, and from the scientific standpoint, we have all the data there. We're able to look at just so many different parameters. Mm. Um, but from my standpoint, it's to communicate to you in the simplest way possible for right. you to understand. Gotcha. And to really just stay on the objectives of the lesson or the, your objectives. So everything from the sessions with Tyler you're working on, we can look at it a little bit finer with the 3D system. So I'm wearing some sensors just so people can see and the club has a sensor. One thing you won't see is that you sort of had a mapping tool and you, how many points do you think you mapped on my body? Like at least 20? Uh, yeah, about something 20, like yeah. that. <laughs> You're putting me on the point there. There's something should, like that, I should right? know the exact no, number. No, but exactly, but just, I, just to give people some idea, I mean, like my arm has been fully mapped and the trail yeah. arm, the hips and everything like that. So the avatar that shows up there is, it's really just a representation of exactly how I'm moving. Yeah, it's a simple four minute calibration process. Right. Where we're literally just telling the software, um, the system where the different landmarks on your body are in space. Right. And that allows us to get the data that, um, just looking at the way the body moves. Yeah, stuff that maybe the human eye can't see, but or maybe you can see, but you need to quantify it. And then it obviously it helps to baseline someone and then see how much progress they've made in the future. Absolutely, Basically. yeah. Okay, so okay. let's get started. How'd that feel? That was a pretty good swing, it felt like. Good, good contact. Yeah, pretty similar. Those three felt pretty good. Okay, let's have a look at that last one. Sure. Okay, That's and, cool. and the cool thing, yeah, the cool thing is, it's just well, just from an animation. This is more from a teaching standpoint. You can use it in so many ways. The animation. Yeah. Like oh, you, you can, can move it. In, I can in move it around. I can look at it from any angle That's that I cool. want to. So, I mean, obviously, I can move it down the line. Mm. But let's start off. I'm going to go back to face on. I'm just going to have a little look at the data, and obviously, we played yesterday. So yes. I you got saw to, a few of my patterns. <laughs> I, I, I saw a few of your patterns, but also I was listening as well to kind of you mentioned a little pain in the past of the neck yep. and also missed tendency to be a, a push or it tends to turn a little bit over too yes, much. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so this is, a, this is the value we're really just focused on here now, your hand popping, we're at address. So I'll just zero that now. So typically we play a couple of little references is that um, we've got a seven iron here. Yes. It's usually around when club gets to parallel. You're not going to see a B value show. So that's the club or the hands moving further back from the ball, if that makes sense. So, so away from the ball. Yeah. So if you were set up here, yeah. you wouldn't see in too many players, the hands move in uh. this way, away from where they started. So that would be an F value, that would be a B value. So uh, okay. in, early on in the swings, your, your hands work this way. Interesting. And inside. Inside, yeah. yes. So first of all, there may be some value to that with some players. Right. But for yourself, with the question around your trail arm. Yes. When you think of how the trail arm, one, ends up kind of behind your pivot. Yes, it does. And then two, how deep, which we'll look at in a second, your deep your hands get. It makes it tricky then to get that trail arm back in front and speed up the rotations through the shot. Okay. So for you, that's something we really want to look at. We wouldn't want to see the hands moving in because that's going to push the elbow deeper in the start of the swing. So the first, really just the first few inches of movement are kind of setting me up for some bad positions, which then cause me to not be able to keep my arms in front of me in the downswing. Absolutely. And there's even, we can, we're going to go back to the setup in just a second. There's one little refinement I want so as to kind of look at that, okay. that kind of leads to that a little bit. Gotcha. Um, but I, I'm just going to show you once more. We'll go sure. further into backswing with the handle path here. And you can see that next landmark, you know, landmark I almost want to give you is that at the top of backswing, I mean, I, that is, you're more than double the amount, comfortably more than double the amount from in hand depth, deeper like than, than you'd 
typically see the majority of good ball strikers. So you want to see something in the 20s, low 20s? Um, even even under 20s. Interesting. So, so that so just so people are understanding, you you rigged everything up on my trail arm just because that's what we're referencing. Yeah. That means that basically this distance is about double what I would like it to be. Yeah, where your hands are in relation to where they started in sort of that way. Right. They're more than double the depth. Okay. Deep. So deep. visually, we we're really looking for something more like that. I mean, that. I mean, if you would take your left hand out to the club there. So say when your left hand, you could and almost just take a grip. Yeah. So when the left hand is parallel, one reference that I use often with players is that you wouldn't want to see the trail elbow getting too much deeper than your trail shoulder. Interesting. So this elbow here, that's my trail shoulder line. That's the amount inside that we don't want. Yeah. We really want them to have somewhat of an alignment. And that's and that's also very important. That's when the left arm is parallel to the ground. Parallel to the ground. Okay. So right around there. That's. Whereas I'm probably a little bit more, you know, a little bit like more this. That, that way. Yeah. Because everything has moved one quickly this way. So inside of this is the starting yeah. position. I've immediately moved this way, which yeah. is making me move quite a bit this way. Yes. Which means that in order to get myself kind of you know, for a traditional term, like back on a decent plane to strike the ball. Yeah. I'm either going to have to do something here. And so Tyler said something to me, I really end up doing this. And yes. that's why he said my body stops in order to let the arms catch up. Because if my body was to turn at the rate it should, the club would just continue so far behind me and out to the left that I just wouldn't be able to swing properly. Yeah. And that's something that we see a lot. Just um, a lot of the times you'll see players notice something like that on camera where they okay. get into a certain position through downswing yes and then they make it the objective like oh i i've got to improve that by going at just that point in time right. so they'll, they'll be looking and thinking like oh that's where the issue is oh but in reality the issue you have to go back and usually a number of steps and just understand the way the player approaches the shot the way the player moves stands at sets up the way they move the starts of the swing because it all has an influence on Transition. Makes sense. Because transition, I'd say, is likely, you could argue, the most important aspect mm -hmm. of the golf swing. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens before it is, can be hugely helpful to transition in well. Understood. Okay. Um, so, yes, what you're seeing early on is definitely influencing where you get in at that, the, in that transition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, if you go to setup, I mentioned in sets up, and this is something sure. I wanted to look at. So one thing I want you to just, just kind of notice is how much your rib cage sits with your lead shoulder above your trail yeah, shoulder. I have, I have noticed that. So let me just look in here. What that is. My right shoulder tends to, like um, when I yes. set up, I often feel kind of this relationship. Yeah, and I want to play around with that just a little, but if you were to just stand up and, and kind of hold the club in front of you, almost like you'd see a lot of people get so uh, I just want to reference the difference between the top of your hips and your bottom rib. And then, then see if you can just almost settle down into your setup little knee bend, keeping that distance the same. It might feel almost like a little, so little knee bend and then feeling like you're keeping the distance between them. So you can almost feel a little crunch actually in the position you're in. That's it there. And then See if you can, yeah. And you might, it might feel to you like that left arm, oh, sorry, that lead arm is staying a little softer. I tend to really overextend that yeah. lead arm. I don't know why, I developed the habit a long time ago. So that, so you're basically saying, because I'm pressing hard, I'm almost pressing this way. Yeah. That's what's crunching this shoulder high. But the, the lead arm, I'm almost feeling just a bit softer. Like it's, it maybe has a very slight amount of bend in it versus being hyperextended. Yeah, that's it. So How's I'm just going to take an image there if you are. And just one other final thing, actually, in your setup, mm -hmm. just again for lowering the hip. And we, we spoke a bit about your hip stuff the other day. Yes. So I just want to play around with it. It's, it's just, let's see how it seems if we get the knees to match almost the, the, uh, the laces of your so shoes. So instead of me being too far bent. I mean, they can, be, they can be bent. It's actually, I'm referencing more where the knees kind of point oh. that way. So you were a little in. here, in. So, so just so people can see, I, I tend to be a little this way. Yeah. So you're saying spread the knees further apart from each other. Yeah, and just as a reference, using sort of the midline of the knee to Down match to the up middle with of your foot. And again, you can use the foot as well because you'd almost want even even pressure between the toe, the heel, and sort of the outside of the foot. So you're probably a little bit too much there. So let me have a look there. More like that. 
More like that, yeah. And then, so that, that would literally be it. So that the rib cage, the lead arm, then it's gonna want to soften a bit more. Yes. And then the knees just matching a little bit more. So yeah, from that start position, let me see you take it away there without touching my hand there. Don't worry about this way. So do you hear the yes there? So that's the feedback telling you that you've moved in the correct. That's you, you've created a little bit of space. What we can do there is actually allow your, try and soften that right elbow a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, how does that feel? So more space between my arms and my chest. Absolutely, yeah. A little bit more space between your arms and your chest. So right around there, I think is, that's where we got it for you. Good. Okay, so a little bit more up. Yep. Yes. Okay, so I'm still, yes. obviously still pulling in you, a bit. That's why I wanted to see the, the value there, just because. Okay, so I need to feel a little bit more that way. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Very oh. interesting. Good yeah, because to me, I mean, it's obviously, uh, you have to exaggerate things to get the right feel. To me, yeah. I kind of feel like I'm giving it one of these. But in reality, it's just, I guess it just looks. Yes. Beautiful. So that's, that's actually, I've, I, you, I've actually encouraged you to move it that far just in front of you, five centimeters. Gotcha. So you're creating a little bit more, a little bit of room there that's in the That's quite interesting. So you made a setting, just so people understand, on that, I'm looking for this motion. And as soon as I do it, the machine says yes. Yes, it's specific just to you. So just I can that change that's really whatever cool. I want those values to be. That's really cool. Okay, let me try that again. So you are, there you go, I'm very Pretty close. Pretty close. And the more, I would say go back to the beginning there, Matt. Let's now watch the sequence a little bit here. Okay, so more in front. Okay, let me try that one yeah. more time. I need to exaggerate a bit more. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So one thing I really like here is how you've got the seam on your shirt here. Yeah. How your elbow is staying so much in front of it early on. Like we on talked about, yeah. To buy you time later on in your backswing. Interesting. Or buy you space, I should say, rather than so time. A little softer. Yeah. Yes. Nice. It's very satisfying when she says yes. <laughs> what I'm finding the main difference is the amount, as we talked about, the amount that it's away from the body because my regular is so in. Absolutely. So for me, I need to feel it, what is a little uncomfortably away. And then she says yes at that. I'm Absolutely. feeling it come more towards you and that's when I get the, the right feedback. Yeah, and even, I'd like to take it a little bit, just one step further for the trail arm. Sure. Um, so another, another reference, so is that, in that takeaway move when you're getting the yes, I would like to see if you, you're sort of decreasing your trail arm there, Matt, if you could keep it similar height to where it is at address. Similar height so, in, so while creating the yes, your elbow is moving upwards. Ah, okay. I, which it will do, yours is doing a little, just, a little, a little bit too, too much. much. Yes. How's that? That looks awesome. So I'm, I need to feel it. So I'm feeling a little bit more out, but also low versus in and up. Yeah, okay, gotcha. perfect. Let's do that again. Perfect. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, Triangle so. here. So for you, because you were set up with your lead shoulder high. Yes. Your trail shoulder would move up early in the swing. So that's what it would do. Oh. It'd be doing a lot of other things. It'd be working up. So it's almost pulling the elbow up. But then also your wrist is it could be a little more active in just supporting the club a little bit. So, and as the wrist does a little bit of that, it's gonna influence the elbow to fold. Sit in a little bit like that. And that's yeah. something that I struggle with is my elbow tends to do this. But with the, the rib cage position it's set up. Yeah. And then also just the, the hand not really encouraging it either. He's got segments either side encouraging it. Makes total eight sense. different ways. So just to kind of round out this adjustment we've made, which I think is a really good thing for me to work on. Once I've gotten myself to a point where I can work on yes. like this motion yep. here. Yep, go ahead, I'll, we'll see. Yep. It will naturally, obviously there's work to do to the top of the swing, but this will naturally put me in a position to be a lot better at the top. Yep. More I mean, in front of me. <laughs> 
And I can see that elbow is a lot more in line with my shoulder than it used to be. I think you'd really like if I showed you where that's... I can see, I can see kind of in oh, the mirror yeah. of my thing there, yeah. You know, this motion, this first motion. Yeah. Putting me in the position to get more Absolutely. Here, and yeah. then when I swing through, like the club is, it's not here. So I can actually take this and actually rotate my body and deliver the club without having to stall my body and make all these compensations. Yeah, because you're essentially because your hand path isn't so deep. And we've yeah. also worked on the rotation as well and how you load. Yeah. It's just a lot easier to get your arms in front of you, which allows you to it really makes total sense. Really get through it. Okay, this has been extremely interesting. Let's cut it off here because it's a lot <laughs> okay. to digest. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to people seeing what that looked like. I'm looking forward to watching it back and just seeing the difference in that takeaway. The takeaway for me, I've, I've always known I throw myself into some bad positions uh -huh. in that first couple feet, but I've never really had this feedback and kind of someone explain to me how to make that feel to get that correct feedback. Uh -huh. So I'm, look, I'm kind of looking forward to go hit a few balls and we're gonna play today. Yep. So I'm hoping I can make a couple rehearsals out there and maybe like watch the ball start on a little bit more straight line and not feel the need to make so many compensations. Yeah. Um, and then maybe we can follow up with a further session that dives into it a bit deeper. It sounds perfect. Sounds good. Look forward to it. Yeah. Okay. That's All right. Terrific. Thanks, Ian. And guys, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about this. It's really technical, interesting stuff. Hopefully we've done a good job of kind of simplifying it, which Ian is really good at doing. Um, but if there's any questions, let us know when the two of us can get back to you.